I'm talking about reluctant readers, and I think a lot of what I'm going to say is is actually not very much news to most of us who are teaching uh, students at the university level in particular. But um, it's nice to have some data to, to back up our impressions. A, I am going to go very quickly because I have too much material and too many slides. So I'll be really happy to go to the uh, breakout room later and answer and take questions. I don't think I'm going to have time for questions otherwise. Okay, so I'm at a liberal arts college in Tokyo, a wide range of students. We have English mostly in our first two years. We have a comparatively low number of students who study abroad and a comparatively low number of contact hours with strong institutional pressure to improve test scores. So uh, extensive reading is one of the ways that we try to increase the number of contact hours or exposure hours of language to students. Uh, we started using extensive reading uh, in, nine, in 2015, um, and at that time we were using both uh, digital and online, and we've since switched to completely using the X reading system. Uh, our students read uh, over four semesters, and we also give them summer and spring assignments, and we try to make sure that all of the students complete at least 300,000 words uh, by the end of our two years. Um, we also tie regular assignments, quick writing assignments and discussion assignments in class to specific X reading books. So students are given two, two books to read a week or asked to read two books a week. One is their choice and the other is a book that's assigned and it's thematically connected to the content of the lesson. So all students read some amount. We have very few students or no, no students who read nothing. Uh -huh. All right, and this is what our uh achievement looks like at the end of the two years so the average is just under 300,000 um and you can see by the the graph on the right that we have a pretty good cluster of students right around the average and and actually it bumps up a little bit so most of our students read well over 300,000 uh the highest was i think 700,000 here right 707 and the lowest is 34,000 so this would represent the absolute minimum that a student could read to meet weekly uh classroom uh assignments all right uh, a couple of students are or taken out of the data here, one because of disabilities and, and the other, they, they quit school. Uh, the rationale for the current study was that our word count achievements actually hi hide some non-compliance figures, meaning that uh, there's a lot of cheating, uh, unfortunately. And so I think this is probably true for most programs. Our data is really uh, uh, muddy because uh, such a large number of students report having completed assignments when in reality they haven't. Uh, so it's important to go back and ask the students about their experience so that we can get uh, some feedback about our, our uh, program and extensive reading from students rather than just looking at uh, how many students you know, supposedly achieved our targets. The research questions are, are there differences in the profiles of compliant and non-compliant extensive reading students? And uh, do the responses of non-compliant students suggest any ways that our program can better, can better support all students? All right, the current study was conducted in uh, January of 2022, and just after students had completed the two-year ER program. Uh, the anonymous responses were collected uh, via SurveyMonkey, and uh, the students were asked to estimate what percentage of assignments they completed, uh, really. And then after this, there were 10 clusters or categories of questions with 39 questions in total. 243 students took uh, were eligible to take the survey, 251 did. The reason this happened was one of the first year teachers accidentally gave the um, survey to, to their classes and uh, one of their classes. And so we got a few more responses than we, than we needed. Uh, however, these students had just finished two years uh, or two semesters of uh, extensive reading. So I don't think the data will be uh, affected very much. And the responses then of compliant and non-compliant students were compared. So uh, if we take a look at, this is how the breakdown went. 45% uh, of the students uh, uh, completed all assignments. And then I'll be basically comparing these two red groups here. So the students that completed uh, 20 to 40% of these targets will be compared with the students who completed 100%. And 
for reference for some of the slides I've included, uh, the students who completed less than, than uh, 20, just to see how they compare with the other students who completed the 20 to 40 percent. Here are the categories that we looked at. The first category is attitudes towards language learning and um, that well actually their language learning success or history and how they felt about learning language in junior and senior high school especially. Um, next is their attitudes, their beliefs about language learning through reading easy books. We do a lot of explaining to students, but some of the sometimes the message doesn't come through about the necessity to read easy books. Um, the third one is attitudes, preference for other established skills. So we ask them particularly how they feel about reading in comparison to other skills. Students tend to have historically tended to uh, favor speaking. So the next three categories deal with motivation and three different types of motivation. The first is the L2 future self. Um, number five is um, motivation for uh, completing the assignments to get the grades. and the Next one is a cost benefit analysis, and that is um, whether they how how they view the assignment in terms of the amount of time required, the amount of effort required to complete it. The last are in, uh, circumstantial, and I guess these could also be called experiential. So, what is their experience with different aspects of the program? And the first is, um, or with reading in general. So, the first one is about their early uh, reading experiences in L1. Uh, in reading motivation uh, studies, this is often asked the students to see what their, what their impressions are towards reading as, 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 as an act. Next one is uh, about mentors, having a good mentor or having a person that they trust and believe in recommending uh, extensive reading. And the next one is about their experience using graded readers. How did they feel when they read them and how did they find the X reading system? We're only using the X reading system. So uh, we asked about their experiences with the X reading system. And the last one is about general time management. And this applies, of course, to other subjects as well. But uh, we looked at it in terms of finding time to do the reading. And I'll show the results in two uh, parts. The first part will be the overall results for the categories. The differences between compliant and non-compliant students were average for each category and then compared. Um, and we looked at which had the greatest differences. And then um, all categories showed differences and five categories were particularly large. And let me just put that up to show what it was. So this is what our, this is what uh, the results came out as. For the categories. The largest one was the not worth the considerable time investment. So students did not see the extensive reading as being uh, e e efficient way to learn. So not, not worth the time that they needed to do it. Next was at the bottom time constraints and time management. And then we find a uh, the next one is the ex graded reading experience is not enjoyable enough. And then the credit or grade weight is not worth it. And the last one at the top here is the uh, early history of success shows some differences. OK, I'd now like to go through the individual responses. And I'd like to um, go through some of the, I can't, don't have time to go through all 39. So I'm going to uh, look at uh, some select ones. That, and I've chosen the most the items that show the biggest difference. Um, and I'm going, to, uh, I'm going to go through and show a few others as well uh, so that we can get a better picture of what uh, a compliant and non-compliant students look like. Uh, I also included for this section, the results of the less than 20% students, because I think that that sometimes shows a trend of uh, non-compliance. So uh, those students often have good reasons why they are so low, um, but for this part, I put them in just for reference. Okay, the first item here is um, about learning history. So I have always found English to be easier than other subjects and our compliance students agree to this uh, more uh, often. However, what's interesting is that the non-compliance students also agree to it at a fairly 
fairly, you know, good amount or number, right? And not as many disagree with this. Okay, compared to other students, I was better at English than most students in junior and senior high school. And here we don't find very large differences, actually. Um, the, uh, except with the number who are agreeing, but we find fairly large differences with the number who are disagreeing and disagreeing strongly. Right. It, I put more effort into studying English than other subjects in junior and senior high school. And the compliance students are a little larger, but again, the non-compliance students are not all that far off the mark. Um, and uh, I think it's kind of interesting that they claim to be uh, good, hardworking students all through their system, and then they get to university and they kind of stop. So, um, okay. The next one here is about uh, their sense of self-efficacy. So the how, how strong or how good they feel at English. And I feel that I have a pretty good vocabulary when I'm reading. Our compliance students are agreeing to this a little bit, but our non-compliant students much less so. And if we look at the, le the, the students who did the least amount of reading, they are really disagreeing with this. So they themselves feel that they have a very weak vocabulary. All right. This is their scores in junior and senior high school. And students here get a score out of five. So four or five score represents students who are quite good or are doing well at the, uh, in the courses. So I usually receive scores of four or five in English in junior and senior high school. Most of our students are agreeing with this, the compliance students, but a fairly large number, about 60% of the non-compliant students also seem to have done well in junior high school and less, least, uh, uh, the lowest readers, less so. All right. This one is for the motivation section, this, this item. However, I think it fits nicely in this section um, because we're talking about efficacy. Uh, goals of 80 or 100,000 words, the word count targets, seem too difficult to achieve, so I didn't try. And here we find a huge difference between the compliant and non-compliant students. So our less compliant students are agreeing with this to a much greater degree. So what does this mean? Here's the way I've interpreted these results. The non-compliant students have had less success as English learners, but not no success. In fact, we can even argue that they were fairly successful before entering our program. However, they have a poor sense of self-efficacy. All right, let's look at um, their beliefs about language learning through easy books. And here we find not very big differences. Most of our students agree that in extensive reading is a key to improving English uh, at, at all levels, really. Uh, and we have pretty good buy-in at the compliant level, especially, but even at all levels, really. All right. However, ER is a study technique that I like. Uh, what I'd like to point out here is that few students really like it, but the number of students who dislike it strongly <laughs> increases quite a lot as we go through compliance. So students are showing very clearly that they don't like extensive reading, or many of them don't anyway. All right, so dislike of ER is surprisingly highly, is unsurprisingly highly correlated with non-compliance. However, even among non-compliant students, there is acknowledgement of the importance of ER. Uh, among students, there's a clear preference for focusing on speaking. This is another item I didn't include it here. Okay, motivation to credit or grade weight. And this one was, I think, the slide that showed the biggest difference of all, or the, the item that showed the biggest difference of all. I will complete the reading assignments for the grades, even if they are not enjoyable. And our compliance students are agreeing with this to a very large extent. Others, not so much. And I think that compliant students are more focused on achieving grades and more willing to complete any assignments, uh, unsurprising again. Uh, Non-compliant students are uh, more affected by the emotional reactions to materials and assignments. So they tend to, um, they tend to vote with their feet or, or follow their emotions or, or, or not do what they don't like um, than the uh, compliant students. Uh, let's now take a look at the graded reader experience. 
And this question asked, uh, or they asked them whether they thought graded readers are hard to read. And this is a strange question in some ways because <laughs> By definition, they should be easy to read. Uh, however, this might indicate a, a problem with book choice or uh, something else. So, um, but take a look at these results here. Uh, the very few, very few of the, well, but still some of the uh, compliance students are choosing, yes, that's the case. But quite a large number of the bottom group here, the less than 20% are agreeing with this, that the books are hard. and. All right. The X reading system is difficult to use. All right. And I think here again, we find a similar pattern to the, to the previous slide that the lowest level students are finding the system confusing or difficult to use, but the top students are not. All right. So what, what's the reason for this? I think that it, it says more about the students than it does about the system. Next one, it's hard to find books on X reading. And this is, I think, a very important slide for understanding these students. So quite a large number of the lower level students are having difficulty finding appropriate books. Right. And again, I think, I think this says much more about the students than it says about the system. So here's the way that I impact this. Uh, low proficiency and uh, the low proficiency and sense of efficacy possibly colors the perception of the entire ER experience of non-compliant students. Books are harder to find and harder to read. And therefore, they probably need more support, but I'll get into that later. All right, the next one, time constraints. And this was the section that had the biggest difference. And we can see I had little time to read because of my part-time job. Quite a few students who did not read much agreed with this. And at university, this is a big issue because a lot of students have to pay for their own tuition. And so they really have to work 20 hours a week. Right. And we find that our non-compliant students are working more, it seems. I spent too much time with my friends and had little time to read, right? So this one is more an issue of time management than, than uh, real constraints. So uh, the non-compliant students are agreeing with this one more. I had little time to read because of my family situation, and this could be taking care of an elderly parent or siblings, uh, but take a look at the data here. It shows pretty clearly that the non-compliant students have more family obligations that are taking away some of their time. So between their part-time job and family obligations, they probably really do have less time to, to read. Uh, and the last one here, I don't know why, I just never seem to have time to read, right? This one is getting at time management. And we can see that the lower or the less compliant students have a real problem with time management. So what does this mean? Well, non-compliant students may have some good reasons for not reading, such as part-time jobs or family situation. Non-compliant students also have trouble making more efficient use of the time they do have. All right, so what does this mean? Let's kind of go into the discussion section. Non-compliant students may be more delicate more likely to use avoidance strategies, and so perhaps require more attention and support. Uh, Follow-up after onboarding is really essential, I think. Uh, help with selecting books is really essential. And actually giving students titles of books that they might like and showing them how to find them might be an important way of helping these students. Time management is a crucial issue for language learners and teachers. Many students left to their own devices will not use time efficiently. Uh, and so they need to be kind of pushed into this with clearer benchmarks, goals, and deadlines. And that brings me to the end, and I think I'm just on time. Thank you very much. <laughs>